There was uh, good news, yeah, a couple days ago. Uh, Ole TNT. Yeah? Yeah? Kukia Imauna. Yeah. So, for this movement, this Kukia Imauna movement, um, I wrote a song. And this song is entitled Hemele no Papa. And what this song talks about, it's, it's a conversation between Kanaka and Aina. Yeah? It's a conversation for Kanaka and Papa. We're letting each other know that we hear you. Yeah? Us as Kanaka, we heard the call. Yeah? We heard the call. Papa was calling out to us and we answered. Yeah? We answered strong. And look at what the outcome was, yeah? The Pono. Pono was the outcome. Yeah? Pono was the outcome. So this Mele, Hey Mele No Papa. Um, this is a really brand new song, and I'm gonna be all self-conscious about it because it's the first time doing it in public, so. <laughs> but whatever. Oh, 
University who is the applicant knows, all their attorneys know, the TNT and corporation, they all know that the permit was invalid. They already knew. And that so what they did was they tried to push ahead with the construction. Because they figured they get the construction going, they can get things going, and that by if by the time that the court make one decision, they're hoping that they already built the, 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 the or at least a significant part, then by the time, too late, what you gonna do? And you know when you stand and you make that decision, when you know that the officers are gonna be armed and you still go. Like this last one, November 18th, when we knew what we were up against and we were still gonna go. And you drive through that fear 
and you know they're all waiting at Halipohaku and you hear maybe the National Guard is going to be there but you still keep driving that's when you know there's no turning back and the only way we can do that there is because of everybody who's everywhere praying for us chanting singing holding a sign and just standing for us from here and everywhere and i wish we could be all over oahu because this by no means is everybody this is one community two communities and really it's your whole mokupuni and i wish we could do that but we we can't so this is where we decided to be today but really we're speaking to everybody on this island when we say that it matters and please don't stop because we're not going to stop and we need you we really need you mahalo all of you bimo akiona ka moku o ke abe folks are so important you know like the last one i live there i retired fire police but i get a call bimo get 80 guys coming from out of off your island bimo the, the campsite is on the department of hawaiian homeland that's where the command post is be more they serious. Be more they get weapons. Man. And when you hear that, the only thing that can make you drive through the field is knowing about you guys. Knowing about Waimanalo. Knowing about Maui. Knowing about your Mopuna. And you know you gotta go. And you go. And you know about people like Laurie. About a cockle kick it coming up you guys coming up we all want Kino we may be in different places but the only way we can reach the way we all need each other is for us to be connected in our Kino we were being pushed towards a cliff from TNT not just TNT the process the state government everything we as Hawaiians we still get it pushed towards a cliff but because more of us coming in the pile we're getting harder to push and now we started to push back now instead of just standing there we're turning around and we're looking them straight in the face and we say come and it ain't gonna be easy you're gonna hurt as much as us and now they started to slow down so the permit was invalidated for the tnt project so just go back to that so that means we don't exactly know what it but I know they got to start over again and to how far they're gonna start over they're gonna do the permit all over or they're gonna start the content they got to do the contested case that we know for sure so but what's still pending in court is the sub lease why are you issuing one sub lease when the master lease ends in 2033 Three. I believe around that yes. time which is not too far from now so why are you building something that is going to be longer than 2033 because if they were to build the, the TMT project it wouldn't be finished to like 2020 something and the master lease ends in 33 so that means you only get about less than 10 years of life on that telescope yet the telescope's life is around 60 years or more so something is going on that in, in Hawaii, you can only have a lease for 65 years. And that's what the university has. There's, the law doesn't allow you to, ex, to, end, to renew the lease. The lease ends 65 years. That's it. When it's pow, you got to get off. You pow, you're supposed to get off the mountain. And so that's the next big thing coming up is the master lease. And the, and the state and the university, they're trying to work and maneuver around the, the, the rules and the laws that's in place and they're trying to get a new lease. Our next steps really is our patriots who are in court. They're in court January all through the month. We have either trials or we have continuances and extensions. Explain who the patriots are. 
and the Patriots are those who have been arrested over time all the way since April and some of them stand amongst you and so we're going to, that's immediate as well so for us it's Patriots first then sublease and then longer term and and we're all in that but we are leaving you in a few minutes and we want to end on a high note because really there's nothing sad about this okay this is like so freaking fabulous that's all I can say this is like changed our lives it's so fabulous and we all know yeah that today we have said it all during the day that the machinery came down today and just like every other day that we've been on the mountain there were kia'i up there before they went up there there were kia'i up there on the summit area chanted them all the way down and let us know about it every step of the way okay first machine coming down coming around the switch back I'm <laughs> crying away until every single one came down and Lanakila had just arrived up there so it was a sweet victory for him because he at least got to see them all come down coming off from here flying back home he just caught it at the end and I'm just gonna say what the last thing that we did on the phone my daughter and I chanted together on the phone and we chanted this chant right here E mano no la e ai e mano no la e ai kau ka o pe o pe ka u lu he la e a ai oi that is a chant from the time of Kamehameha the second when Kekua Okalani and Manono stand for the Kapu system and they are killed, husband and wife. Where is Leke Leke or the Kona Surf Hotel area, if you know it by that. And today, we said to Manono, today you have your victory. Today, you get to stand Manavahine, Kekua Okalani in your name. We stand because you stood at the ending of the Kapu system and you fought and you died for that. We didn't have to. We stood and we are living and breathing and we are victorious in this moment. And now we stand for them. And that was the last thing we did before Kalani blew the poo right here and they blew the poo on the mountain. And we said, yes, we're going Nanakuli. So, Eo Nanakuli, thank you so much, man, for having us here. From Uncle Kalani, Bobimo, everybody came from Moko Kiawe, for Nanakuli, yeah. It's like Mahalo Nui Nui Kealoha to you folks, that because we hold them down every Monday from Ooh. May, you know, so with Auntie, Auntie Doi, Uncle Kavika, Sister Mailani, my wife Noe, us. Yeah, Uli, Sister Keke, you know, Laoli, Apu stay with us, Tita Lari, Nanea. You hold them down like you said, Auntie. Sometimes they rain or shine. <laughs> Auntie, Auntie Noe's first time when got all drenched in rain. We was here holding down in the rain too, but because Manawa Kea brought us all together. I know. You know, and we love you guys. And we hold them down, you know. And everybody, we, we missed like three weeks one time. And when we came back, there was, everybody was like anxious to see us. they sticking their heads out of them. You know, they was waiting for us, you know. Because at one time, all our mokus over here, everybody was holding signs. So Makaha, all the way down. But we choose to stand because we love, we love you guys. And we love our Lahui, we love our country, and we love our Vahipana, you know, so. Mahalo. Yeah. Mahalo for coming. Yeah. One more, one more last thing. If you like, come 
our island, you like come out, Mauna. I already went host this one at KK, so you know I can host you. You get nice holiday. You get beautiful yeah. bathroom. He does. Too. He has yes. special place in his bathroom. Wow. Just, uh, so just you welcome in my house anytime. Wow. Just contact me, That's come nice. over, and I'll host you. Very over, okay? gracious. Aloha, Aina Kako. Um, all our uh, Kiai Mauna and supporters friends in solidarity. Um, we're here at the Waimea Courthouse today where um, some of us uh, were supposed to have trial. Um, it appears that the, um, the court is unwilling um, to proceed with trial because they want to examine the recent Mauna Kea Supreme Court ruling. Um, we're not sure what that means but it kind of makes us wonder if they're just going to dismiss our charges. We're not sure. I was able to get the court to um, proceed with my trial partially. So I um, was able to um, have two of the officers, arresting officers on the stand, um, cross-examine them. I wanted to call my witnesses, Kalekoa Ka'eo, Dexter Ka'iyama, and the court would not allow me to do that. So my uh, trial was very partial and um, I got a continuance we need to come back in January but I think that um, honestly the court is very unsure about how they're gonna proceed with all these arrests and charges um, and they seem very evasive today not willing to go to trial um, I'm the only one that was able to get partial and there wasn't much so stand by, um, keep up the, uh, the good work to Malama Mauna Kea, and we'll see you on the next one. Aloha. What's going on with this court, everybody coming to court all the time? Well, uh, from a procedural standpoint, the court, Judge Takase, of course, the Hawaii Supreme Court just came out with the decision in the TMT case, mm -hmm. invalidating the CDOA permits. So the court has decided on her own that that all of these arrests somehow are connected to the court's decision invalidating the CDUA permits. The court having rendered, the Supreme Court having rendered this decision only on Wednesday, this judge is saying she has not had enough time yet to fully comprehend the ramifications of the Supreme Court's decision. In particular, the concurrent um, opinion of the Supreme Court, which discusses some of the protections afforded to Native Hawaiians and their traditional and cultural practices. I think it sounds to me, based on her comments in court, that perhaps she finds the concurrent opinion perhaps to be persuasive and how it might impact um, the prosecution of these cases. That being the case, the court um, on its own has asked that all of these cases be continued so that the parties can brief the issue and then the court can better understand exactly how the Supreme Court decision impacts the prosecution of these cases, if at all. Our people have never given free consent to what has been going on on the mountain and what has been going on for the last 120 plus years in these islands and stuff. So whether it's issues of water or we're looking now over at Haleakala or other issues, you know, I, I'm a firm believer this ball will grow and get stronger and stronger. The voice of our people will get stronger and stronger. And the more we, we struggle and agitate against what's wrong, we build the strength and foundation for our, not just people of today, but really for the future generations. We cannot help but just do what is right. So I said, we cannot help but just do what is good for the land. And as long as we look at what's the best of the land for our people, we're always going to be in the right stuff. So. I, it's all of this. We just reawakened our nation. That's what it does. So do you guys think Governor Ige's administration did their due diligence? Or do you think that they actually knew about the, the permit being invalid and they just was hoping that we wouldn't find out about it? Or would it contest it? Well, this is how I would say they're in a, in a state of denial. Um, because they cannot, while well, they cannot dispute the fact that the wine kingdom continues to exist, at this point they're not willing to relinquish that power. So that's why they're continuing to exercise their fake authority over all of this. Yeah, so. And what they're trying to do by continuing to grant these permits or continuing to move forward is to try and entrench, further entrench themselves as the so-called authority, even though they don't have any lawful authority.
pick for you You will pick for me Put it in the basket I'll be living free Here's a card we have. This is a picture of um, John Wise while he was a football player at Oberlin College. Um, so this is this picture is from around the late um, 1890s. So you're giving this out at each uh, at each petition that you guys give away. Yep. So for every person that comes here, um, we are giving them a John Wise card, and um, there are different types of cards at the different stations. And if you collect five of these, you are able to win, uh, or you're entered to win one of these um, prizes. So we just want to, you know, get people aware of the different movements that are going on from the overall event of celebrating. Hawaiian um, independence to talking about Mauna Kea to talking about honoring John Wise to changing the name of Makili High School and just to bring forth a lot of issues that are going on in our um, community and to just um, celebrate Hawaiian independence. So um, we have a petition here today to um, restore the original name of McKinley High School. Um, in 1907, it was changed from Honolulu High School to uh, McKinley High to honor the, the President William McKinley. But he was the final say in um, illegally annexing uh, Hawaii. He passed a joint resolution, but a joint resolution has no um, effect beyond a country's border. So he couldn't, um, couldn't do that. So he uh, passed the, the bill and it um, unilaterally annexed Hawaii. So we're saying he shouldn't be honored and he shouldn't have the biggest school in Oahu to be named after him. So that's what this petition is about. Stay like this for like a couple of minutes. Okay, we're gonna start cleaning up after. How long do you have to uh, take it down? Oh, take everything. Like all the the printing stuff is still gonna go on the side. Yeah. Oh, just play on it. Pretty good pressure, yeah. too. 
Yeah, so this petition is trying to change the name of Bok Milan back to its um, original name of John Wise Field. So John Wise was the first collegiate football player to play um, football. Um, he played under the legendary coach, Coach um, Heisman, who's the um, Heisman Trophy is named after. Um, after John Wise came back home, he got um, involved in what was going on. Um, he got arrested for protesting the um, overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom um, and later he got involved with the um, territorial legislature where he became a um, territorial senator and what's really interesting and what a lot of people don't know is that John Wise co-sponsored a bill with Charles E. King that actually established the um, university so the university had a lot of um, influence from these um, Hawaiian legislatures. Um, following that he became the second professor of Hawaiian language um, and he even co-authored the first Hawaiian language textbook with Frank E. Um, Mithkiff. Um, so John Wise, you know, while he was here at the university, he had a lot of um, support for the athletics. So when John Wise died in 1937, um, they dedicated a football field um, and called it the Wise Field. Wise Field ran from where the current Bachman Hall um, Bachman Hall is now to where Cross Hall is. Um, but when Bachman Hall was constructed, um, the field kind of lost its name and the history went from there where a lot of people actually forgot that it was called Wise Field. Currently, um, according to a university map, the field doesn't have a name. So what we're trying to do is, is trying to honor John Wise and everything he has done for our Lahui, especially being that on the field there's the Ahu um, in regards to Mauna Kea and the Hawaiian language programs are one of the only programs that consistently use the field. Um, so we want to honor John Wise and to start having more of our um, Hawaiian names brought back on campus um, and the big idea is it doesn't cost anything to change the name of a field so you know that's why I started this um, petition and you know we just want to move it forward and give honor to John um, Wise. <laughs> Where's? That's my initial. Oh no, you put it in your uh, oh. Nah, it's gonna give it some character. Yeah, there you go. How long you hold on for? Um, put some good pressure down. Yeah, should be good. And then put some pressure here. Alright. I'm just gonna put your whole weight on it, like no joke. Just like stand on. <laughs> You've been working on black shirts.
Kuo Koa or Hawaiian Independence Day, I think has a, a great story to it. Um, Kaui Keuli in, in June, I believe, of 1842 dispatched uh, three envoys um, led by the Hawaiian ambassador Timoteo Hotlilio. Um, and they basically traveled to the other side of the world. Um, it was a two-year diplomatic voyage um, in which they were uh, meeting with the heads of state from the United States, Belgium, um, England, um, France. Um, and upon their, their, their return, almost two years later, in 1844, um, they had secured um, uh, what is known as the Anglo-French Proclamation, or, or could, what could otherwise be known as the Hawaiian Treaty of Independence. Um, so from 1844, throughout the existence of the Hawaiian Kingdom, uh, that national, that, uh, that event was celebrated uh, through a national holiday. Um, today, uh, that history is being uh, revived uh, here at the university, and so um, uh, that, I think, is, is going to be the, our, our first annual uh, celebration of Lakuokoa, and I hope many more to come. services for putting this together, giving us a chance to stand in front, in front of microphones. Um, it's always a good time. It's true, we've been doing this for a while. It's a, it's a real joy to sing. It's a joy to sing with someone else. You know, Hawaiians love to harmonize. And when that person is your own child, it makes you feel really good. Not only about the way you raise them, but also that they, they appreciate the same music that you do. So, I'm happy she so compelled to that you will sing along. But do be warned that, like I said, the poem is long, it's seven and a half minutes long, so if you stand up in the beginning and start singing this song, it's gonna be really awkward. So feel free to just sit, this is a song we usually stand to sing for, but feel free to sit, we'll sing it in its entirety at the end, and then you can do your kanaka duty and stand up. It's 1872, and David Klaakoba, not yet crowned, yet not yet anointed our king, hands a song at the request for commitment to fit. Oto Kapuaiwa, Hawaii Ponogi, a new national anthem, a new symbol of strength, a new promise to the Kanakamaoli Kulakaua's generation, that like those before, they will stand and fight for their right to no puni. Today, we call this resistance. Back then, we just called it Ponogi. Hawaii Ponogi, no, no. Like that. Kauli Keuli, Bellowing, Wamo Keo Aina, 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 Wamo
Rocco will hold this declaration as he pushes it through his them. melodies. Like we have been taught to hold it in our bloodline and cradle it on our tongues, keep it sacred and safe from the poison fingertips of this fake state. <laughs> Because it's 1893, an overthrown kingdom, a nation in distress, an eloquent people who can let me write friend of grass, feeds for a generation, rocks of resistance. Hence us, the melodic reminder of our genealogy of protest, and Kaloi Ko'olau and his Mohana run through the brush of Kalalau on Hawaii. Their steps are heavy but precise because they know the weight of oppression shrouding their shoulders. They realize the power from which they resist when they refuse to be wrongfully imprisoned by his sickness. So when he let him bury him, his her tears that return his body and rifle to dust, his generation TK, an answer strapped across his bare chest, pointing back to Kalafa was called to protect this legacy. take cover in the Pohaku above Le'ahi. With rifles armed, with gunpowder and aloha'aina, untrained soldiers give their lives for Hawaii. But these are not the core of the king who reign of Wailea. They are only the last physical defense of a people who know in their na'o that laying down to the opposition is not an option, though they are not malo, not ma'a, not ihe. They are the couple who answer Kalaho was called. <laughs> so it's 1897, when America's physical power seems to be a muscle that could not be matched, Kanakamoli of the Patriotic League take to the greatest weapon of a new time, pen and paper. Because of them, our Fukuna's names remain scratched into a new kind of stone, painting the picture of a strong, unified people, a nation whose love for Aina and Lahui could not be buried, erased, or rivaled under joint resolution. <laughs> galvanized by the resistance to Kalama Valley evictions, nope. land on the island of Kohalabe. They have come to heal an island torn by the bombs of someone else's war, for someone else's security. Because of them, because on that day, the Pacheco Olave Ohana reignited a practice of Aloha Aina so powerful, it defeated the largest military in the world. But between March 6th and 7th of 1977, George Helm and Kimo Mitchell were taken. Their sacrifice reminds us what we must be willing to offer back to our law for that sometimes we do not return on our own two feet. Sometimes we are only the song, the faint memory of a sweet melody. Sometimes we are only the mo'olelo for the next generation to carry. Now, it is 2015. Those of us who remain have the kuleana their lessons laced into the backbone of our practice so that they shall never be forgotten. <laughs>
always chicken skin when other people sing. These next couple songs we're gonna do are Mauna Kea songs. Um, and we do them out of uh, reverence for the Mauna, but also out of celebration for the recent uh, ruling from the Supreme Court. Uh, yes, give a hand to courts doing their job. Good lawyers, good lawful people in the world. Wait, okay. Dad voted. I was just gonna give him credit. But whatever. So um, this is this is a song that I wrote. I was trying to I was trying to understand or, or get people to understand what about that mountain is, is sacred and why the telescopes are such alien things. And sometimes it's hard it's hard to express that unless you're willing to kind of personify yourself as the telescope. So this is a song that's taken from the perspective of the telescope. And don't worry, it's not that odd. It's, it's just that the mountain is so full of life and so full of spirit. And then to bring these inanimate objects, these artificial things, and plant them on the mountain, it makes me I think sometimes that they must be out of place. We sing lots of slow songs. 
Not really happy hour music. But I assure you, if you drink more beer, they sound faster. It sounds more happy. I'm not sure they sound happy. Probably not. But you're happier. You're happier to be here. Yeah. Irish shows. This is a song that was written in uh, 19, 1971 by K.O. Beaver before there were any telescopes on that mountain. And as I've gotten older, I've come to realize what, a, what, a, what an amazing song is. And the reason it's amazing is because it is so simple. Beautiful. It's such a simple expression of love for that mountain. That, you know, I mean, you almost have to be from the way I live to really, really feel this. And, and the person who wrote it was from Waimea. So from Kamuela, from where their house and ranch was, uh, the Beamer grandchildren would look up and see this mountain every day. I mean, it, it, was, it was never out of view. Even, even when the, the place was socked in with clouds, you could still see the outline. He doesn't mean this to alienate anyone who's not from Hawaii. No, I, I actually, I, I meant to do exactly that. <laughs> they're not from Hawaii, but they need Well, Maui, they got Haleakala, so they don't even tell us anyway. And it's a true thing that when you drive around, when you drive around um, Alamo Valley, and you come up on the other side of Makapu, and you're looking at the windward side, there is no more beautiful view on Earth. But no, still, this is about Mama K.
you want to do? There's some chairs over there. Let me get some chairs. I haven't seen them. Hey, can I? Hang on. Like, can I? All right, so our people have been using music or words for hundreds of years to express not only our relationship to the land, not only our admiration for the chief, not only our love for each other, but in very difficult times, we have used our words to demand that people understand that we are still here. And we're not going anywhere. The lines belong to this land, this land belongs to us. We've said this, we've said this not just with our words, but with our bodies. We put our lives on the line. We have people go up to that mountain. We have people go over to Kalalabi when it was dangerous to do this. People have died and given their lives, given their careers, given their youth in order to remind people that the Kanaka Maori and the Aina, they are inseparable. And we've done this over and over and over again. And I am confident, looking at what we're seeing today, that it will continue long past the time, our time, and past your time as well. It is who we are. It is what we are. And so one of the songs that's given me a great deal of inspiration over all these years is that the song that was written by Eleanor Wright Pendergast in 1893. A song of protest against the evil men who helped dethrone the Queen, who invited the United States into their <coughs> into their crime. We did all of those things and then had the nerve to demand of every loyal Kanaka Maoli that either they sign an oath of allegiance to their government or they would lose their jobs. And it's a great story. The, the Royal Hawaiian Band got up in mass and quit. They walked off the job. They said, you take your job and stick it to They did. I mean, they didn't say it like that. They said it in Hawaiian, which is probably better. Uh, and we sing this song a little faster than we think it's fun. We hope you sing with us. We also sing it fast and angry because it's one of the few songs we sing that can be sang fast, so we use it to wake people up when we sing for them.
Okay, aloha kako, kalame, aloha kako. Okay, so right off the bat, <laughs> the flyer said, I pohaku ya. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> Solo mission tonight, but that's okay, because you get one I pohaku, you get them all. That's how. Okay, try that again. Aloha kako. Laku o koa. Yeah. So, wao poki isito no wai anai. Just gonna play some songs tonight, some mellow songs. Um, some mele Hawaii, mele aipohaku. Um, and just some songs that, <clears throat> that uh, were created for this movement, yeah, for the, for the Kanaka. So, here we go, I guess. Pick for you. You will pick for me. Put it in the basket. I'll be living free. Sound check right there. 